Sure. The foolishness that went on his first year in Denver with the private coach, his own office at the facility, and family at training camp when other players didn't have those privileges proved his self-centeredness. So, Keyshawn, how much will teams that need a quarterback doubt Russ's leadership? I don't think they'll I don't think they'll doubt his leadership because I do think that Russ is a leader. I think what people will do is they will look at him differently when he walks into the building. Because if you hadn't played with him, you hadn't coached him, you know, and you don't know anything about him except yeah. everybody's piling on Russ at this present moment. They are. He's easy to kick right now. Including Carl Mecklenburg. Including <laughs> Carl Mecklenburg. Do you know of him, of his oh, career? Absolutely. He was, he Number was 77, good. I think he yeah. was, middle linebacker. Yeah. So I, I, I no, know he's, about he's him. A pass rusher. Pass rusher. Yeah. I know about him yeah. and Gratishaw and the whole. Yeah. yeah I, trust me, I know. And so everybody's piling on Russ right now. Everybody's acting like Russ is not one of the top 32 quarterbacks in the National Football League, as Agreed. if he's not a starter. Yep. His last year in Seattle was not bad. That's why Seattle traded for him. Yep. Because he was playing good football. Mm -hmm. Part of the problem is, and let's just call it what it is, Skip, there's a lot of resentment and jealousy of Russell Wilson, okay? Because he forced his way out he got control of a franchise in Denver that was so desperately starving yep. for a quarterback that bamboozled them yep. and Aaron Rodgers, mm -hmm. tricked them into hiring Nathaniel Hackett, they did, and yeah. then went back to Green Bay but got his buddy hired by Green Bay with the notion that, hey, if we hire Nathaniel Hackett, we're going to get Aaron Rodgers. And Aaron Rodgers basically about-faced it and said, nah, I'm not, I don't want to be traded right now. I'm just going to go back to Green Bay. Uh huh. Got yeah. him to That's hire him. Yep. Yeah. And then they were stuck with their hands in the cookie jar, and they had to come out of the cookie jar with something. And that something was the next best thing that was available for Pete Carroll. Pete Carroll said, we don't want to pay Russ $250 million. Y'all can do it if y'all want to, but that's not what we want to do with two years left on his contract. Yep. So what did they do? George Payton and Nathaniel Hackett and the new ownership group, uh, uh, the Walmarts or whoever it is in Denver, related to the Walmarts, decided to make a splash. I think they weren't yet involved. They right? had just gotten there yeah. right at the same yeah. time simultaneously, <clears throat> and, and, and the deal yeah. was done, you know. So they make the deal. Russ has two years left on his deal when he arrives in Denver. They didn't have to pay him. They didn't have to pay him, nor did George Payton and, and uh, Nathaniel Hackett have to give him an office. They made that decision internally yeah. because he asked for it. And if he asked for it, I'm assuming he asked for it. I don't know 100%. Maybe they offered the damn thing. <laughs> and if they offered it, he gonna accept it. Yeah, I'm assuming he asked for it, but go I, ahead. I, I, I yeah. don't know that. Maybe yeah. that was, a, hey, you know what? We'll even give you your own office. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah. Now, let's say he did ask for it. Mm. Let's say he asked for it. Did you have to give it to him? Did you have to give him the $242 million and a hundred and some guarantee? Did you have to with two years left on his deal? Or could you let him ride it out where now your stress level mm. wouldn't be so high in Denver yeah. and you probably wouldn't have fired the coach because they made this monumental mistake. So everybody's piling on Russ now. He's not a leader. He's his own locker room, his own office. A lot of that, too, across the board in the National Football League is jealousy. People are jealous of one another, whether you want to believe it or not, because somebody has the money, or somebody's with a pop star. His wife is, in her own right, famous in her own right. Yes. And she's a nice-looking lady. Mm -hmm. And now, all of a sudden, she goes from a, a, a hip-hop artist to a quarterback <laughs> that now, all of a sudden changes his approach, his look, his everything from where he was previously. So everybody thinks everything he's doing is phony and not real in the way that he approaches it. Oh, uh, let's ride or whatever. So everybody wants to poke fun at this man and do all of these sort of things. And a lot of that also has to come with winning and losing. Mm. If he's winning, he ain't really saying nothing. We just kind of like, 
oh, okay, then we win it. Mm-hmm. But when you lose and you have <laughs> made this major uh, transformation to what people think isn't true and real and authentic, they start looking at you a different way. Now it's e- you're easy target to pile on. You're an easy target to pile on. And that's where he's at. He's such an easy target to pile on. If he goes, I don't know, the Pittsburgh Steelers. I like that. Mike Tomlin's approach is different. Sean Payton didn't do him any favors. By coming in and immediately addressing the office situation, he ain't going to have no office, not up in here, he wouldn't have had an office if Sean Payton was to acquire him to begin with. Mm-mm. That would have never happened because Sean wasn't going to sign off on it. No. That is George Payton and Nathaniel Hackett that did that. Yep. Sean probably wouldn't have gave him the $240-something million. No. Probably would have made him wait it out. That is on them. They the ones who decided to do this. And then, although he had a decent season last year, they approached him, Skip, and asked him to mess with his contract as they were on their way to a playoff appearance, possibly. Yeah. They were on their way, and they started messing with this man and dealing with him. So I'm not going to be one that's just going to pile on him and just treat him like that, although he hasn't played as well as he had in Seattle in Denver. Mm. I'm not going to do that. I I, I can't do that because that would be fake of me to do something like that. And I'm not going to do it. All right. I'm going to let everybody else do that if that's what they choose to do because I'm not jealous of him and his wife. All right. Nor am I. I like where you're heading with this. I like your lean on this one because I am with you. Enough of the piling on. Do I think he lost a little of his edge and drive when he went to Denver and committed more to his family and to other things off the field than being driven to be the best quarterback? I I do think there was some of that. But guess what, ladies and gentlemen? I think it just returned because he now got pushed out the back door unceremoniously, and I think it will sting. I think he is ripe to have a very good couple, three years for somebody somewhere else. You're right, team. Yeah, and I brought up Pittsburgh the other day because Mike Tomlin could deal with this. Mike Tomlin, again, I'm a big fan, but he's not going to coach him the way Sean Payton coached him because he's not, Mike's the defensive side of the ball. You knew him when he was yeah. defensive backs coach. He, he's going to coach him psychologically instead of strategically and technically. It's big picture psychologically. He's going to try to put him in a new comfort zone where he can regain what he was in Seattle. Listen, he took a lot of hits in Seattle. I think he's been a little beat up, but he played pretty well at times last year. The game at Buffalo, he played very well in. Okay, so do I think he still has enough to be a starting court? Yes, I do. Yes! Especially for a needy team like a Pittsburgh Steelers. Gardner Minshew was a starter uh, in the National Football League. Yeah, still is. Yeah, still <laughs> bouncing. Yeah, he's still, yeah, he'll he'll probably start some games this year for somebody. But I'm talking about not a 1A backup court. I'm talking about Russell Wilson can come in and win you get. He would be a great fit in Pittsburgh because their defense is good enough to take them yeah, places. They run the ball. They got some, they got some weapons. The they, they got some side. young pieces yes. from catching the football. So you put him in there. Okay, here's the problem with Russ. He comes across as fake, but but the, the Russ well, I know. What if that's really okay, him? Okay, but here, I was just going to say, what if he's fake real? You know what yes. I mean? What if that's just his personality? Yeah, yeah. Is, it comes across as a little phony. Look, it, it, I don't mean yeah. to cut you off, Skip, but because you're talking about it, and, and I don't get into people's personal lives. I, I just don't. I, I, I have no interest in his personal life. However... How about the people that he dealt with in the past couldn't unlock this personality that we see now because that's really truly who he was, but at the time, he was still locked up Mm -hmm. in doing what they wanted him to be and wanted him how to act, opposed to the way things are now. How about that? Is he just naturally a little corny? Is he a little... Is he? Okay. I've been around him. I've dealt with him. I know fake when I see it, and you I, I, I know it. Yeah, I think that's just him. Okay, all right. I think all I, those I've been around his brother. I, think, ride. I yeah. think that's just yeah. Okay. him. Yeah, and that's okay. Yeah, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But again, in the National Football League, people are jealous of other people, whether they want to say it or not. 
It's not a very, it's not a lot of National Football League players. This ain't the NBA. This ain't Major League Baseball. National Football League players, think about this, that got their own Gulfstream planes with their number on it. Yeah. With the number on the tail. Mm -hmm. Not the tail number, 36XY3. Yeah. I'm just talking about number three. I understand. There's not a lot of those. He's one. He's one. So people resent things like that. If, if in fact, Bill Parcells or, or Tony Dungy or John Gruden or John Fox would sign me and they say, hey, I say to them, hey, I want to, you know, I want to get an office in the building. And they say, sure. What am I going to say? Oh, I don't want an office? You think Carl Mecklenburg, if they gave him an office when he played, he was going to say, ah, I don't want an office. My office, I'd invite my, my, my teammates in it yeah. and be able to say, come on, man, come to the office. Let's yeah. just chill and watch film in here. That's okay if, if that's if, what they wanted to do. If you were allowed to bring your kids to camp and nobody else was, that's wrong. That that's where you I, just say, then I, I'm not. I, I don't. Do it. I don't know. Yeah. If that was the case, I don't either. Okay. If the other players didn't ask to bring their families and their kids to camp, and he asked and they awarded that to him, don't take that up on him. Yeah. Take that up on the organization. For, for allowing him to do that. Agreed. You see what I'm saying? I do. Don't, I, I, I would ask to go home after a road game so I didn't have to fly back yeah. to a certain city. Yeah. And the team said, sure, you can stay. Just yeah. be back on Wednesday. Okay. Because I asked. Don't get mad at me for asking because if you would have asked, I maybe agree. you would have got the same damn thing. I'm with you. All I know for sure is that that man who kept saying, let's ride, went through a rough ride down the stretch in Denver and got knocked on his tail. And that episode where Sean went after him during that game, that was like that. ugly. Yeah, I didn't like that.